Hello everyone. This is the first lecture on linear algebra. This is under module 1 vector spaces. Uh, in this lecture we will see the definition of a vector space and some of the examples of the vector spaces. Okay, so before jumping into the definition of a vector space, we will see what is a binary operation. Binary operation is nothing but a function from v cross v to v itself, which means you take any two elements in a set v, then you perform an operation and after performing an operation, the output of that operation you get is also an element of v, then that operation is actually called as a binary operator. For example, take two real numbers and add it with our usual addition. Addition of these two real numbers becomes an another real number, which means that addition is a binary operation, which means I similarly, multiplication of two real numbers is another real number, which means that the multiplication operation is on real, num on real number is also a binary operation. Throughout this course, we'll see so many binary operators. But as of now, actually, we'll stop at this place. We'll move on. While we are moving on, we will ex I will explain some of the other binary operations also. Okay, so what is a vector? So vector is for physicist is a different and then a computer science it is a different and mathematician is a different in a sense that a physicist represents a vector something like this. He has always a tail and then head and then expresses a vector as a directed component. So for example, if a, phys if a physicist is saying, he may say the vector is nothing but an ob object which has a direction and a magnitude. Suppose if a computer scientist, if you ask what is a vector, for him it is just an array of numbers, something like this, 2, 3, 4. So this is a vector. For a mathematician, the vector is nothing but an element of a vector space. In fact, the vector space is a general concept of having vector like this or having vector like this. So whatever I am going to, so I am going to include all of these together and then I am going to call, these are all an elements of, elements of a vector space and that is going to be the definition. So let me go through the definition of a vector space. So vector space is nothing but, is a non-empty set V with a field F, which means you take any set V and association with a field F is called as a vector space with respect to the operations plus which is a binary operation and a scalar multiplication which means you take a scalar from field and then vector from the uh, V and then multiply it and then you should get an another vector in the V itself. And these two operations should hold the following properties. The first property is the commutative property u plus v should be equal to v plus u for every v, u and v in the v. And the second property is the associative property and that is nothing but you take three elements in the in the, in the set v and the adding the first two elements and then adding third element is should be same as that of adding the last two elements and then the adding the first element. The third property is the existence of identity which expects an identity element 0 should be in the set so that u plus 0 should be always equal to u itself. And the fourth property is inverse existence property which expects for every element u in v, u in v there should be always a minus u in v such that this nullifies the u which means u and minus u the addition of these two should give the identity element which was exist. So these pro four properties are for the addition and the rest of the four properties for the scalar multiplication and addition together. So the fifth property should so satisfy is for every v in v, I'm sorry, for every u in v, one dot u is would be equal to u. There's a printing mistake over there. So which means one times of u should be always u. And for all alpha beta in f and for all u in v, alpha beta times of u should be equal to alpha times of beta u. And the scalar multiplication should, dis should, dis should be distributed over the addition. What do I mean by that? Alpha times of u plus v should be equal to alpha times of u plus alpha times of v. And similar to that, the 
vector distribution also should happen on the scalar addition which means alpha plus beta times of u should be equal to alpha times of u plus beta times of u so these all eight properties should be satisfied for a given set v associated with the the field f and the binary operation plus and another operation scalar multiplication if the, these all satisfies then we say that v is a vector space over the field f under the binary operation plus that's it so let's look at some of the examples of a vector space one obvious example of a vector space is nothing but set of all real number system as i have usually, as i have already mentioned suppose you take two elements of a vector space then addition of the two elements in the uh, sorry so you take two elements in the real numbers then addition of two no real numbers is already well defined so look at the r with the addition operation and of course the scalar multiplication is the usual multiplication of real numbers over the field r itself then this forms a vector space so this is my example number 1 why because plus is a binary operation and then dot you take any element in r then multiply with r and then you get an element in r and also the commutative property is also satisfied because we know that any to well any two real numbers i can write a plus b as b plus a and so on so you can verify the rest of the properties as well that is also easy to verify in fact more generally you can also say something like this you can define a set new set r2 with addition property something like this so r2 is nothing but a real number system r along with that another real number system r the cross product of these two so any element over here will be of the form x comma y where x comes from this r and then y comes from this r both are real number system so r come r2 is actually nothing but set of all x comma y such that x and y both are in r so the addition of these addition in this uh, r2 can be defined in the following manner how say let's take two elements x1 comma y1 is one element and x2 comma y2 is another element and the addition of these two is been defined as x1 plus y1 comma x2 plus y2 if i define the addition in this manner and the scalar multiplication suppose like alpha times of x1 comma y1 is been defined as you alpha times of x1 comma alpha times of y1 so i have defined an addition i have defined on scalar multiplication as well so r2 with respect to this addition and scalar multiplication is also forming a vector space you can verify the eight properties over here as well okay more generally one can always go for the higher dimension so r2 comma plus is been defined in this manner why don't you define r3 comma plus it will be defined as x1 comma y1 comma z1 plus x2 comma y2 comma z2 should be equal to x1 plus y1 plus z1 comma x2 comma y2 plus x2 plus y2 plus z2 similar for the scalar multiplication in general one can define rn comma plus over r so this is also vector space how the addition has been defined so addition has been defined as every element x1 x uh, x1 comma and so on up to xn uh, plus y1 comma y2 comma and so on up to yn is been defined as x1 plus y1 comma x2 plus y2 comma and so on up to xn plus yn and then similarly alpha times of x1 comma x2 comma and so on up to xn should be equal to alpha times of x1 comma alpha times of x2 and so on so if you define the operation in this manner then rn comma plus rn with respect to the addition operation over the real number field r is also a vector space okay mm, we can take this things little more further why don't you consider consider the following let's see m m by n which is nothing but set of all m by m matrices set of all m by n matrices maybe i would directly write it like this set of all m by n matrices then 
the addition is defined in the similar mat similar pattern itself how do i define the addition suppose if i want to find the addition of two matrices the addition of two matrices has been represented by the ijth entry of the addition uh, sum of the two matrices so the sum of the two matrices ijth entry would be equal to the individual matrix ijth entry and then addition of those two so a plus b ij is equal to a ij plus b ij and then alpha times of a and this ijth entry is nothing but alpha times of a ij so if i define the operations in this manner plus an scalar multiplication and then the set of all m by n matrices also forms a vector space over real number system in fact you take set of all matrices m by n over com uh, complex number system c and that is a vector that is also a vector space over c itself okay so the fifth example we can see in a slightly different uh, in fact one can also say r infinity comma plus is also a vector space what do i mean by r infinity r infinity is nothing but it's an infinite dimensional vector it's an infinite dimensional uh, set uh, which i mean as you see x1 x2 and so on up to it keeps on moving it's not stopping anywhere so all the xis must belongs to r okay for every i so this is r infinity under same plus and that is the same operation whatever i have done in the previous example also will work for here so this is also a vector space over the real number system r similarly yeah so let's let's have a sim uh, another example um, let's see all the set of all functions set of all functions from a set x to y let's consider this which means uh, why don't i write it as let me capital f uh, this notation i have already used it for a field so let me write it as the cal of so set of all function is nothing but f from x to y set of all functions now see i can define an addition operation in this manner which means what do you mean by f plus g of x that is nothing but you know what is f of x and you also know what is g of x uh, g of x and then add these two under this y so f plus g of x should be equal to f of x plus g of x and also f alpha times of f of x define it as alpha times of f of x this is actually called as point wise addition so set of all functions under this operation over any field under underlying field you can always consider any field that becomes vector space so set of all functions from x to y over f is also a vector space uh, i can actually say i can mention some of the uh, spaces which are taken from this is so one of the vector spaces taken from this one of them famous is uh, set of all polynomials set of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n that also forms a vector space using the same uh, addition and then scalar multiplication operation which i have defined in the previous one you can verify that that's not a big deal and uh, similarly uh, you take this this is a special special uh, set uh, c of a comma b the c of a comma b is very famous in real analysis this is nothing but it's a function from closed interval a comma b to r such that it's continuous so set of all continuous functions from a to b a closed interval a comma b to r if you see any two continuous function sum of these two continuous function is continuous you must have proved in your basic real analysis course and any alpha times of continuous function is also continuous so therefore the addition of two functions as defined in the previous one it says that the addition is a binary operation over in this uh, set as well and then scalar multiplication also has been well defined over here and you can verify the rest of the all properties that's all will be again satisfied for c of a comma b as well which means c of a comma b with respect to if i write this then over r is again a vector space right uh, more gen in fact uh, you can build up more and more for example 
uh, set of all uh, differentiable functions you take a, a one time differentiable function set of all one time differentiable function is also vector space over r and then set of all two times differentiable function is also or is a differentiable over r and then set of all infinitely many times differentiable is also vector space over r so you can find many uh, examples of here what are the non examples for example what is the set which does not uh, hold as a vector space okay um, one of the basic example which i can give is you take uh, one closed interval a comma b closed interval a comma b and this is not a vector space you take uh, the example of 1 comma 2 and that's not a vector space why it is not a vector space you take 1 and then you two take 2 here if that would have been a vector space over any field the uh, the field which i suppose if i consider r then this is not a vector space over r because you take uh, closed interval no so you take some number 3 and then 3 times of 2 should belong to this one but uh, actually 3 times of 2 is 6 and this was going to be here which means the 6 is not lying in lying in this uh, interval which means the scalar multiplication is not well defined even otherwise actually you can take uh, 1 and 2 so 1 plus 2 what is 1 plus 2 1 plus 2 is 3 which means the addition itself is not binary on the closed interval 1 comma 2 so therefore this is not a vector space over r okay that's one example and uh, this is a trivial example and then another example which i can say is ah uh, yeah so look at the set of all polynomials look at the set of all polynomials of degree equal to some constant say for example degree equal to 3 that is also a rot vector space over uh, any field uh, for example uh, why it is not a vector space again for the same reason you take uh, uh, one first polynomial as x cube plus uh, x plus 1 and then the second polynomial as minus x cube plus 2x plus 1 and what is the sum of these two sum of these two is uh, 3x plus 2 which is not uh, a polynomial of degree 3 which means uh, this addition operation is not binary on the set of all polynomial of degree exactly equal to 3 remember set of all polynomial of degree less than or equal to 3 is a vector space over r but equal to 3 is not a vector space over r so these are some of the examples of vector spaces and non examples of vector spaces you can always consider you can always construct some of the examples which are not a vector space also which are ex ex which are also ex uh, vector spaces anyway so uh, this is what for today's lecture we will see in the next lecture subspaces which is nothing but a vector space which is completely inside an another vector space so we'll discuss about that and we'll discuss some of the properties of the spaces in the next lecture okay thank you all